knew what a big opportunity it was for our team, for our program, and to play in Bud Walton. And I um, just wanted to come out with as much energy. I wanted to, uh, I wanted that to fuel the uh, to fuel our team. Um, Amber had a, a great game. Um, our whole team had a great game. We were connected on defense, connected on offense, and it was such a huge win. They, they mentioned on the broadcast, you're just tired of losing to ranked teams and, again, making a statement with number three UConn tonight. Absolutely. Um, you know, we've been on a little bit of a tough stretch, um, but I think we got back to the things that we do um, best, and it showed tonight. Paul Boyd, go ahead. Uh, yes, uh, Chelsea, can you can you kind of elaborate on that? You say got back to things you do best. What what were those things that, that led to your success tonight? Um, getting up and down the floor, making the next pass um, to my success. You know, just just taking what they give me. You know, uh, if they give me the shot, take that. Um, if they give me the drive, if they give me the lane, take that. Um, but overall, I think that we played a great together, great basketball today. Let's go ahead. Let's go ahead. Oh, sorry. Uh, Chelsea, y'all y'all built like a 13-point lead there in the third quarter, but saw it dwindle all the way away. What, what was the key to kind of sustaining that and then eventually pulling it out? Um, you know, we knew UConn um, goes on spurts, and it was just sticking together. Um, we've been in this position many times over the last few years and just sticking together uh, and keeping that same energy. Nate, go ahead. Just as significant as the Baylor game, or even more so, to, to beat a UConn. Oh, um, much more. Um, yeah, it was it was much more, <laughs> much more exciting. And, and, go ahead. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. Okay, Dorian, go ahead. Dorian, you're muted. Yep. Sorry. <laughs> hey, Chelsea. Um, Coach Neighbors has really credited you with being the first person that believed in Arkansas and believed what he was doing to come in tonight to have 37 points to get that win over UConn. What does it mean for you and also for this program about how far you guys have come since you decided to transfer in? Um, I knew what a huge opportunity it was today. My mindset, um, the team's mindset. Um, we hash get like I said, getting back to the things that we do because that's when we're our best. And, um, you know, I, I believed I believed in Coach Neighbors. I believed in this program. And, you know, it's just been a it's been a wonderful um, experience here. And I love I love Arkansas so much. Porter, go ahead. Chelsea, talk about the fourth quarter. You're, you're down a few players and just the will of the whole team to stay strong and fight off every comeback that you had. It's like you got their best shot and y'all still overcame. Absolutely. You know, um, we were down a few tonight and I think that brought us closer together. We needed each other. Um, we had each other's back on defense. Uh, like I said, making the extra pass, playing together on offense uh, was really the key tonight. Seth, go ahead. Chelsea, how does it feel just to get that monkey off of your back? You know, you haven't won against our team since beating Baylor. Um, like I said, we just got back to the things we did, and I think this will propel us through the rest of the season. Troy, go ahead if you got something. Yeah, Chelsea, uh, you know, not many teams or even players can say that they beat UConn in their lifetime, but you guys are one of those teams and you're one of those players. Has that hit you yet? Um, I, I think it's slowly stinking in, <laughs> but, uh, you know, I'm excited to share this win with my team. I can't wait to get back there and uh, just celebrate this moment. It's such a huge moment um, and, and, and it's well-deserved for us tonight. I think we played hard on offense and defense and uh, it was just an amazing win, amazing opportunity. Alyssa, go ahead. I was going to see if you could describe that moment. I don't know if you've been able to go over and see your teammates yet, but when the buzzer hit zero and celebrating there on the court with your teammates, what did that feel like? It just, it, it felt, I don't, I can't even explain it to you. It was just one of those feelings that, you know, I, I don't even know the words. I can't, I can't find them. Um, I'm just so happy for this for our program. And like I said, for our state, I think that was a huge momentum swing um, for the rest of the season. I think we needed that. Quarter, last one. Chelsea, talk about the fans, a sellout. You were, you were under 600 today and they were able to sell out and bring, bring the energy. So what was it like the all game with the packed house? You just wanted to play hard for them. 
um, for for the people to the right, to the left, to the fans. It was sold out tonight, and I'm so thankful, um, especially on a Thursday night. You know, that's hard to get two people out of work. Um, and at 5 o'clock, I'm, I'm so thankful, and I can't thank them enough. Um, that was a huge part of our win tonight. All right, thank you, Chelsea. Oh, two of them? Yep. Mike's on too. All right. Let's go ahead and get started. Coach, you want to make a little open statement tonight or straight to questions? I, I think, can y'all hear me? Because I couldn't hear you. Okay, good. Yeah, we we can hear you. Got me. Uh, yeah, that was big. That was big. Um, again, go back to just proud of the kids. Uh, a couple weeks ago or a week ago to uh, at South Carolina after a tough loss posed with the question of how do you want to fill this game and do you want to play UConn? And it was a let's go coach. Uh, after everything we've been through, a lot of people would have, a lot of teams, a lot of kids would have said, ah, oh, let's take the time off or can we find somebody that had won 11 national championships, but they didn't. And then the crowd showed up uh, and we, we had a little adversity this morning. Uh, as, as happy as we are, we're just, you know, there's so many other people that could have been here and enjoyed this with us. So uh, we'll, we'll watch it back with them tomorrow. Um, and uh, that's the opener. Paul, go ahead. Hey, just, just talk about the last couple of minutes. I mean, you've been in that spot and, and it's, and you tell, you said earlier this week, you need something to bounce your way, but uh, do you make your own luck a little bit? You feel like your team made their luck tonight? Yeah, I think two things I'll, that jumped to my mind. I'm sure when I watch the film, there'll be a lot more. But Marquisha Davis coming in and putting a run, uh, a stop to the Paige Becker's run. And then Amber Ramirez boxing out and getting a defender on her back uh, to get a free throw. Uh, those are the rebounds we've been missing. Uh, I think we get out rebounded by six, which is just uh, if you if that line had been in Vegas, you could have been a billionaire uh, with that bet. Um but I, listen, I, like I said, I'm proud of the kids for taking the game. I'm proud of them for wanting to do it. And then to come out and perform under all this with all the different things, you could have made excuses about what we've been through. Uh, but I, here's the other thing. I, I think what we did was we won the game in the middle half of the game. It wasn't, you didn't have to win it at the end because that, I think we opened the half on 11-0 run. Is that so, I mean, 11 or 12 maybe. It got more than that. I don't know. But um, preparation was good and, and it carried over. Nate, go ahead. Yeah, Mike, just how significant for the program to beat Baylor and UConn in the same same season? Uh, it, it's got to pay dividends in some shape, form, or fashion. I, I think we won't know probably. I, I tell you this, I had 370 text messages when I went back and got the phone, so there was a lot of people watching. Um, so it's got to have benefits in recruiting. It's got to have benefits in – you know, bringing 4,000 fans out again, maybe sometime later in the year when we need them. Uh, but I do think what it signifies is that this particular group and our administration is supportive enough of us to say, first of all, play the game and then to, to have a chance to compete uh, and to win it. Um, this will be another one that does not have a 24-hour moratorium. Uh, we will celebrate this one for a little longer than that, and we will then turn our attention to Auburn uh, for the game on Sunday. And also just Chelsea's game in general, just what do you yeah. think? Uh, performance. Uh, there's performers and there's performances. Uh, but that kid, when the big stage and the big shot needed to come, uh, was crucial. And I thought she was so patient um, and, and had great awareness and understanding. Uh, and, and, you know, then I look down here right now and Taylor Thomas is plus 17 for the game. She was unbelievably defensively on a Dota. And this is a kid that is an All-American and she got two field goal attempts uh, and two rebounds. So uh, there's a lot of performances. Chelsea's obviously got us off to a great start. Uh, and when she does that, we usually feed off of her. And then we got Amber a bunch of looks today that we've really struggled to find her uh, the last few games. And, and that obviously gave us a – a punch that we needed to have in, in crucial times. Thank you. Yes.
Coach, you got anything else? Sorry about that. Coach, uh, what, what was the key to that 11-0 run to start the half? Well, I, I thought we had some good matchups, uh, and we talked about them a little bit at halftime, and Amber had hit the one going in, so we came out and got her another look right off the bat. And then I thought it fed into our, our defensive energy, allowed us to get back in transition. We came up with some stops. Coach Todd made a couple of little just slight defensive adjustments that allowed us, I think, to uh, defend, a, just get come up with a couple more stops. And, uh, you know, this is – there were so many – there's so many parallels to uh, the, and, and it's going to be such a bad cliche, but the movie miracle where, you know, the hockey movie about the Olympics, you know, you kind of just, they don't always get a chance to see their own blood sometimes because they're not in many close games. And we just felt like if we could keep it close and hang around, we have been in so many just this last couple of months. So I thought that third quarter gave us a little bit of breathing room. It gave us some chances to rest. It gave us a chance to play some kids that were a little bit tired rather than having to sub. Um, and, and it paid it paid off in a big way down the stretch when Becker started taking over. We had enough cushion that that run only put them up one maybe. I think they went up one, and we called a timeout maybe, or they called a timeout. They called a timeout. I remember they called a timeout, and then I think we came back and scored right back to get it back to five. So – Kids were real resilient today. And what was the message? You called the timeout there with 15 seconds left. What was the message there? And what did you think about Amber? She looked like she had maybe a look at a three, but took the last couple of seconds off the shot clock. Yeah, well, you know, I think she looked at the game clock instead of the shot clock is what she told me. Uh, so that's on me. I didn't communicate that well enough. That's poor coaching. But uh, she was looking up at the game clock instead of the shot clock, and it got down a little bit too low to get a good shot. I, I thought she took it to the basket, though and gave us a chance to either draw a foul or make it, but neither one of those happened. So we were back quick on defense and allowed us to, you know, I thought it took them a while to call the timeout. That's where I'm going with the whole hockey thing. Like, you know, they, they walked it up the floor and they passed it back a couple of times and then took a timeout with 0.3 seconds, uh, which you can't get a shot off at that point in time. Uh, it has to be a tip. So, um, but that, that, that was where that came into my head. Seth, go ahead. Mike, you, you mentioned the defensive adjustments in the, that third quarter. Uh, what were they? Uh, we started started guarding the ball screens a little bit differently. Some of those handoffs were really giving us fits, creating some matchups that weren't too favorable for us. So just having Coach Todd back in preparation was so big. Uh, you know, I, I tried to step in and take over the defense for a couple of weeks. It didn't work so good. So I'm so glad he was back uh, to uh, be able to focus a little bit more on the offense and let him handle the defense. But um, – some ball screen stuff and then a couple of matchups. We did some pre-switching. You know, we'd, we'd get down transition knowing that we could switch some actions. And uh, the big number is that we only get out-rebounded by six. That's, like I said, that that just keeps coming back at me when I see that because this is a type of team that uh, has has been able to just shoot till they make it, and that didn't happen tonight. Also want to ask you about uh, Daniels and Michaela. She's drawing a tough assignment, Kristen Williams, and then you even put her on Beckers there for a little while. Uh, what do you think about her defense? She's always guarded our other team's best perimeter player, no matter the size. She held Ryan Howard to one for 10 one year. Uh, she was holding her to that about that this year before she got in foul trouble. She's just really committed to it, uh, has uh, great preparation, and, and she just bothers you. She's nobody, nobody really in practice likes her to be guarding you either because she kind of gets up underneath you. Um, but, you know, her play – uh, without Jalen today, we, we had to have those three kids. Jalen subs for four players. She subs for Slocum, Chelsea, Amber, and Michaela. So we didn't have that today. So each one of those kids needed to play about three or four extra minutes. And then Q play very valuable minutes. And then we needed, we needed Riley in there. I thought Riley's uh, two minutes were three, two and a half, three minutes were really productive as well. Michelle, go ahead. Yeah, Mike, um, I, I had two if I could squeeze those in. First, yeah. can you talk about the resiliency? Because it's so hard to lose some of the games you guys have lost, obviously the A&M game and the Georgia game coming. The, the resiliency of not letting that get to you at the end of a tough, uh, close game, to, to not say, oh, God, here we go again. Yeah. You yeah. can do that. And then I just have to ask you, do you remember where you were, um, the, the Miracle on Ice game um, in, uh, back in 1980? Do you remember where I, you were? I do. I was, I was probably 11, maybe 12. I, I didn't understand uh, the significance. But I, I tell you what, I was scared to death of the Russians. Uh, 
<laughs> because I had seen Rocky Four and Hunt for Red October and Red Dawn and all that stuff. So I was just scared to death of Russians. Uh, and I remember watching that game. And then I remember my – it was either my uncle. It was probably one of my uncles. When I was celebrating, he goes, uh, you know we didn't win the gold medal yet, right? And it just devastated me. I was like, wait, what? We just beat the, the champs. How do, it's like wrestling. If you beat the champs, you get the belt. Um, I remember that – I don't remember exactly where we were. I think I was at my Uncle Donnie's house, but I w- I'll have to go back and ask my mom. She's got a memory like a steel trap. So I'll get back to you on that, Michelle. Uh, and then my memory obviously is not very good. I don't remember the fr- – oh, the resiliency. Yeah. Um, yeah, I thought that showed even in just them wanting to play this game. You know, we, we, this all happened in the locker room at South Carolina after – we didn't play them very close, but we played them close for three and a half quarters. I just said, these kids are, these kids are kind of calloused. That's what I would tell you. I feel like we've done with these, the one point loss with 0.3 seconds to Georgia, the loss to South, uh, to Texas A&M with 0.4 or whatever, you know, it, it, as long as it doesn't tear you apart, it, it'll build a little callous on you there. And that's kind of what our group has been on. Um, I think we still feel like we have stuff to prove. Um, Again, we're not we're not playing just the top twenty five. We're playing the top fives, and, and there's a big difference between playing the top five. We now have played Maryland and Baylor and UConn and South Carolina, and those guys have all been at or near the top five all year long. So I think that's what it builds up is some callousness, uh, and, and just the way these where these kids came from. Not all of them were, um, you know, that highly recruited. Uh, I had a lot of kids telling me when this game happened that. You know, I, I never got recruited by UConn, so it's going to be fun to play against them. Or I, I, I co- played with this player that did get recruited by UConn. So, um, you know, it's got a lot of significance. We respect, obviously, the history and what UConn has done for our game and what Coach Ari Emma has done for our game. So uh, to, to have a win over for them uh, in this season, when everything's so crazy, I'm so thankful they played this game. He could have very easily said no. Uh, but, you know, that's that's why they're a championship program, and, and we learned a lot from them today that we'll carry over in the future of our program. Order, thanks, ahead. Mike. Congrats. You got Thanks, Michelle. Coach, first talk about the crowd, of course, the electric atmosphere, but then also uh, it seemed like UConn played a similar style that you do with one down low and four yeah. back. So how did that help you really stay in the game and then take the lead? Yeah, the, the crowd, I, I was wrong earlier in the week when I said our, I, I thought our crowd would be worth 10 points. I think they were worth 15. Uh, just there, they were here early. They were active. It, it sounded like 14,000 and not 4,000. Um, and, and just to deal with the changing of the time and, and then sell it out. So uh, the crowd was worth 10 to 15 points. I, I'll have to go back and do some calculations. But um, and, and then what was the second part, Porter? I asked uh, with how they done their offensive transition oh, yeah. in the defense. Yeah. You know, Adota got in some foul trouble. Uh, and then obviously Edwards did too. So uh, we were going to try to go at him a little bit. You know, that was, that was a plan for us. I looked down, I see Chelsea drew 10 fouls. Uh, and, and that got us in the bonus for other kids to get to the foul line tonight. I, I can, honestly can't believe we won the game going 11 of 20 from the free throw line. That just, I just felt like, I, when we would miss, Slocum missed two or three that she normally makes. I think maybe Chelsea even missed one. But, like, you're just like going, oh, no, this is going to be what gets us. But um, the, the transition them, the, you know, they rebounded. They're, they rebounded in a different way than, like, South Carolina and those guys do. But if we hadn't played all those people that we've played, we, we wouldn't have been able to uh, to do that today against, against UConn. Hayden, go ahead. Hey, Coach, really quick. Did you get a chance to uh, speak with uh, Gino after the ball game? Did he congratulate you? And, and just his message to you about this win? Just he, I, I spoke to him last night when they got into town to make sure they got here. He's been great. He's been a great uh, friend to me over the years. Uh, and I got to say hi to him last night briefly when they got into town. And then uh, JC and I passed him coming in the tunnel, and he stopped and saw Bowen and uh, said hi to him. Said, you know, this is exactly what I told my team. I, I knew – you guys had great guards, and your and your guards played great. And you asked about the rest of our season, and thanked us for playing the game. And um, it's, uh, I mean, he's a class act. There's there's an obvious reason that they have the success they have, and um, will continue to have. I, I, you know, I fully believe, just based on how long I think he's going to continue to coach, he'll end up retired, our the all-time winningest coach in the 
history of basketball. So uh, for him to say those things about our kids uh, and what he said in the pregame, even just his pregame press conferences, um, our, our kids really respect that and, and, and took a lot from it. I don't see any other ones. Are there any other questions for Coach? Alyssa. Yeah. I saw Alyssa. Troy up the corner. I just have one, Coach, talking about protecting the basketball. You know, after that first quarter, you guys, both teams had six turnovers, and then you finished with nine. They yeah. finished with 15. So you're able to really protect that basketball after the first quarter. That was a little nerves. We, we were a little nervous the moment, you know. You didn't, listen, I mean, UConn walks out here with, you know, uniforms that only one team in the country has and sweats that only one team in the country has and a letter from Kobe Bryant's daughter, on their warm-up shirt, you can't help but be down a few points, you know. So I, I, we had some nerves. We had some nerves, but I thought after that first quarter, like you said, uh, six turnovers, then to only turn it over three down the stretch. I think one of those was a charge, too, really late. Uh, so that's really not a live ball turnover. Uh, but that's what we got to do. We, we, we were a little bit faster today. Uh, you know, I know we've been slower, but I don't know how many – not many teams put 90 on UConn historically. So I think we got back to – uh, being able to be a little bit better version of ourselves, especially, but that's a good catch, Alyssa, on that, that turnover sh changing. Thanks, Coach, and congratulations. Thank you. Troy, I think you had your hand up. Yeah, yeah, Coach. I mean, you've been talking about how much you respect Coach Gino and how much he means to you. I mean, there are not many coaches that can say that they've beaten him in their <laughs> careers, and you're one of them. Uh, you know, how significant is that for you? Uh. Not really. I mean, I, I, the who who we beat, I learned a long time ago. I used to walk around when I was an assistant coach, like in the summers, and go, oh, yeah, we beat y'all. That makes me better than you. It doesn't. It doesn't make you better than them. Um, so, but what, you know, I just – he's a guy who, who chose to coach women's basketball. I said this to our local people the other day. He's been offered men's jobs. People have said, you know, coach this, coach that, coach this. He loves women's basketball, and I do too. There's no desire. There's to me the NBA. There's this is the pinnacle for, and, and I, I love that about what he's done. And he's taught me that that's if you love it, that's what you make it, um, and that's what I appreciate most about him. But he, like I say, he didn't have to take this game. He he could have done a lot of different other things, um, and and I just think that I will look back one day and eh, I mean, you've got that over there. You know, you've got that. You know, I beat Tara Vanderbilt in ping pong one time. I'm really proud of that too. So. Uh, uh, that, that doesn't show up on your coaching record, but that was at the, that was at the PAC 12 coaches meeting. I, I like that one about as much as the other ones, but sure. You know, uh, we'll talk about it and he'll gig me about it, but I can guarantee you this, it won't be the last time we play either. Uh, that, that return game just got a little bit more, uh, a little bit more interesting, I think. Thanks coach. Yeah. Anybody else? All right. That'll wrap it up. Awesome. Thank y'all. Congrats coach. Thank you.